Get down. Hi, Rocky. Hello, Frank. Who you got there? The last of the Crowder gang. Nice work. Lock him up for me, will you? While I report to the boss. Sure, Rocky. Thank you. Come on, you. So that closes the book on the Crowder outfit. Yes, and opens it on another gang of outlaws. I'm sorry, Rocky, I have to send you right out again, but they're having a lot of trouble over at Edgewater. Well, where's that, sir? About two miles west of Midas, that old ghost town. Well, what about that vacation I was up for? Well, I'm sorry, Rocky, but we're kind of short-handed, and this is urgent. Sheriff Nugget Clark in Edgewater has been asking for some help. What's his trouble? Edgewater is a gold mining town, and about every other time the miners send out a shipment, their ore wagons are stolen, just disappear. The sheriff tells me he's had men patrolling the road night and day, but they've never been able to catch up with the outlaws. Sounds like a well-organized gang. Yes, and the sheriff's kind of desperate. We'll have to help him out. Take a run over there and see what you can do. All right, sir. Good luck, Rocky. And uh, how about that vacation when I get back, huh? I, I hope so. Trouble is, these outlaws never seem to take one. Until they land in jail. Well, so long. Goodbye, Rocky. Glad to see you. Are you hit bad? It's my arm. We better get you to a doctor. Do you think you can handle the team? I don't know. I'll take care of How about your horse? He'll follow us. Blackjack! sweet time about sending somebody. Well, sir, we've been a little short-handed. By the way, I ran into some trouble outside of town here. Three outlaws attacked one of those mine wagons. They winged the driver. I brought him into the doctor's. Did they get the wagon? No, they didn't. Two of them got away. I shot the other one. Well, that's one hold up they can't blame on us. 
You see, me and Dan gets the blame for everything that happens. Yeah, well, it's not your fault, Nugget. Yeah, yeah, I know. But it's a good thing you drove them off, Marshal. Or they might have a new sheriff around here. Don't worry, Nugget. You'll be reelected. Tomorrow's <laughs> election day here. I see. Good luck. I'll need more than that. With old lady Cranston and her newspaper are backing that no good brother of hers. This town will be in a worse mess than it is. If they ever put him in as sheriff. Well, he can't even run that express office, right? He... Uh-oh. Well, Nugget, I just heard about our last ore wagon being attacked. Yeah, but they didn't get this one. They wounded my driver. Or doesn't that mean anything to you? Of course it does. What? Uh, this is Marshal Rocky Lane. He was there when it happened. Glad to see you. One man won't do as much good with all the trouble we're having. Well, sir, I'll do all I can, mister. Henry Scott. I own one of the mines around here. And... Ah, leave him be, Henry. You was young once yourself, I think. Besides, Dan ain't to blame for any of this. Oh, of course. Nobody's to blame. We're just supposed to stand by and let these outlaws rob us blind. Well, me and the other miners don't intend to stand by. If you can't stop this, we will. Maybe you ought to run for sheriff. Well, I won't run, but I sure know who I'm going to vote for. Go right ahead. Now, hold it, Mr. Scott. It might do more good if you two would give me a little information. Our ore wagons are being stolen practically every time we send them out. I guess it's too much to ask for a little protection from the law. Now, just hold your horses, Henry. The only thing I'm going to hold from now on is my gun. And I'm going over to the store to get some more ammunition. Alice, you wait for me in the buckboard. Yes, Dad. Don't mind him, Dan. He's just upset. I know. Come on, I'll walk out with you. Too bad about them, too. In love and just itching to get married. Her father doesn't seem to approve. Uh, he wouldn't approve of anybody connected with this office. In fact, none of the miners seem to feel very kindly toward us. How many wagons have they lost? Oh, I'd see. Nigh on to half a dozen. Your arithmetic is bad, as usual, Sheriff. Well, I see you had to get a marshal to solve the problems of Edgewater. Speak your business, Deborah. Me and the marshal's busy. Oh, manners, Nugget. Introduce me to the marshal. <laughs> this is Deborah Cranston, Rocky. Owns a local newspaper here. And if you ask me, she's the owniest female out of captivity. <laughs> He's just mad because I've been printing some true facts about him. Facts? <laughs> you wouldn't know fact if I smacked you in the face. I uh, just came in to get the story on our latest visit from the outlaws. Well, you can say that Marshal Rocky Lane thwarted their efforts and killed one of the dang thieving coyotes. Oh. Congratulations, Marshal. But the driver of the wagon was shot, wasn't he? Only in the arm. Now, let me see. Maybe I could make that read, um... Sheriff Clark reports that the driver of the wagon was only shot in the arm. Does that mean that said driver carries around a spare arm? If this is the case, then we can understand Sheriff Clark's lack of concern Said about nothing it. of the kind. And if you print that, I'll sue you. <laughs> Which will probably be your last official act as sheriff. Let me tell you something, Deborah Cranston. When I go out of office, it'll be feet first. You know, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if the outlaws could arrange that for you. <laughs> my, my, my. I must tell my brother Bert to brighten up this place a bit when he moves in. Uh, tell him to brighten himself up first. <laughs> so nice to have met you, Marshal. Thank you, ma'am. And you know, when my brother is elected, I'm sure he'll give you a great deal more help than you're getting now. Ah, count your chickens again before they're hatched. Well, just wait until them votes is counted tomorrow. Ah! If that female wasn't a woman, I'd... Rocky, I'm telling you something. Someday I'm going to give that old hen the works. And I mean the whole works. Seems to me like she just did that to you. But, 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 but you, you just wait. <laughs> Come over to my office, Bert. Come in, Bert. There are a few things I want to talk to you about. Oh, Miss Cranston. Hmm? Those two men want to talk to you about an ad for the paper. Oh? Oh, yes. Um, 
Oh, say, Tom, would you go down to Mr. Johnson and see if he has the layout ready for me? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Well? We had a little trouble that last wagon. So I heard. Hank was killed. That's too bad. Maybe I should hire myself some better men. We didn't know who that fellow was that rode down on us. He could have been the law. He is the law. He's a marshal from the capital. Oh, we better take care of him. Oh, and have this whole town swarming with marshals? That would be bright, wouldn't it? Especially when we're getting ready to move that ore we have hidden in the cave. Listen, you two get right back out and tell those men to keep out of sight. We'll move those wagons when everybody's in town voting for you. How much do you figure to make from all that ore? Oh, between 50 and 60,000. Mm, not bad. Oh, but we're going to do lots better when you're a sheriff. I better ride out to the hideout and tell the men to start loading those wagons tonight. Uh -huh. uh, take over the office, Dan. Me and the marshal is going over to the dock to have a talk with that driver. All right, Nugget. I certainly hope the marshal can help Nugget and you. Not to mention us. As long as those outlaws keep giving us trouble, we'll never stand a chance with your father. Don't worry, dear. Everything will be all right. It's about time you got back. Or have you forgotten that I have a newspaper to get? What are you doing here? Don't worry. Nobody knows me around here except one guy. You've only been out of prison two days. What are you trying to do? Get back in again? Uh -uh. Not me. We have a sheriff's office here. Nothing would give them greater pleasure than to get their hands on an escaped convict right now. Maybe so, but I got a little business to take care of. What kind of business? One of your men told me there's a fellow by the name of Dan Reed working as a deputy in sheriff's office. That's right. What about him? Being a newspaper woman, I thought you'd have the lowdown on everybody in town. Is there something to know about Dan Reed? Just that me and him serve time together in the same prison. Are you sure he's the same man? Well, I don't know. I just had a good look at him out there on the street a little while ago. Well, what do you know? <laughs> oh, wait till the people of the town hear about this. <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Look, if you've got any idea about publishing this in your paper before I make my move, forget it. Just what is your move, Mr. Brill? Well, what would you do if you found this guy living off the fat of the land? Exactly what you would do. Shake him down. Right. But you'd better do it tonight. At least before the good people of Edgewater read the morning edition of my paper. Fair enough. Um... He's usually alone in the office between 7 and 8, when the sheriff goes to dinner. That'll be a good time to see him. Good luck, Mr. Brill. <laughs> I'm sorry I took so long, Miss Cranston, but Mr. Johnson didn't have the layout ready. Oh, that's all right, Tom. Now, listen, get busy and tear out the whole front page. The whole page? That's right. Every word of it. Dan? Ed Brill. I 
Thought you'd remember me. Cellmates usually do. I heard you broke out. Yeah, prison life bored me. What are you doing around here? Getting a new start, same as you. It's not quite the same, Brill. I finished my term. And now you're all set, huh? Working for the law. Just a nice, respectable citizen. That's what I wanted to see you about. What do you mean? Folks around here don't seem to know too much about you. But suppose they found out you'd served a couple of years in a state pen. I wonder how they'd feel about you then. Let me tell you something, Brill. Everything I did in the past is over, and I've paid for it. As far as I'm concerned, the slate's clean, and I'm keeping it that way. Sure, sure. How long do you think you'd hold your job as deputy here if they know you've been on the other side of the law? Get to the point. All right. I'm a little short of cash. I could use, say, a thousand dollars. Then you could go on just like you are. You get what I mean? Yeah. A thousand dollars to keep your mouth shut. Then another thousand. Ah, don't get me wrong, Dan. Just one payment and I'll clear out. You'll never see me again. I don't believe you. You have much choice in the matter. Either you pay off or I talk. I wouldn't do that if I were you. How about it, Dan? When I started this job, I took an oath to uphold the law. That's what I intend to do. You're an escaped convict, Brill. And it's my duty to take you into custody. Even if you did take me in, I could still talk. You better think it over. I have. You're under arrest. What's that? My sister said, let him alone. Taking a chance. My sister gives the orders.
He's liable to find the trap door. Joe, you better go around the back way and make sure he don't. Disappeared. Rocky, couldn't we maybe come back to Morse when it's daylight? Gotta find him now if he's still here. The stairway's covered with cobwebs. He couldn't have gone up there. Oh, well, maybe he just vanished. Let's see where this goes. Oh, you mean you're going up there? No, no, wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh. Wait for me! the sheriff's office alone. Come on, I may need you. There must have been a whole mob of them ghosts. There was one big fellow about eight feet tall, and I was just leveling on him when somebody sucked me from behind. Come on.
Got him, eh, Rocky? He's the fellow that jumped Dan. He can't make any more trouble now. We've got to take him into the corners. Give me a hand. Brill was a cellmate of mine. He was trying to blackmail me. When I told him I was going to lock him up, the fight started. What were you in prison for? I uh, got mixed up with a bunch of outlaws. I'm not trying to make any excuses, but at that time, I guess I was a little too young to know any better. And he didn't have nobody tell him any different. You can believe him, Rocky. I did, and I wasn't wrong. He's been working for me two years now, and he's done a mighty fine job. Thanks, Nugget. Does anybody else in town know about this? Only Alice Scott. You see, them two kids fell in love with each other, and Dan figured it was only right that she should know. What about her father? Did you tell him? No, I was just hoping that we could uh, catch up with these outlaws so I could prove myself to Mr. Scott before I told him. You're mighty lucky, Dan, that Nugget had enough faith in you to give you this chance with a prison record. But you see, Rocky, I was just trying to prove to some of these old fogies around here that a person deserves a chance to go straight, especially that old lady Cranston. You know what you told me the other day? Said it was high time that the women folks of this country had a right to vote. <laughs> yes, I heard her. <laughs> Females are voting. Can you imagine what would happen to this country? Why, it wouldn't be a fit place for man or beast to live in. <laughs> no, sir. There's something that ain't never going to happen. And if it does, I'm moving out. Well, there seems to be other women who feel the same way Miss Cranston does. <laughs> no, no, Rocky. There couldn't be other females as ornery as she is. No, I'm afraid there are nuggets. Well, anyway, you don't have to worry about that just yet. There'll only be men voting tomorrow. And listen, when they come to town, round up the ones you can trust and have them meet here in your office. What are you going to do? Form a posse and give that ghost town a good going over. Brill was a fool. I told him to stay at the hideout. Yeah, he let the marshal right out there. Do you think the marshal found anything? No, but he's getting pretty close. Might have been better if the boys had taken care of him, but I... Here you are, Miss Cranston. Oh, thank you, Tom. Take a look at this. Pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Are you sure you're right about him? Of course. I know how to run my business. Well, I was only thinking he always seemed like such a nice fellow. Oh, no, Tom, you never can tell about people. Now then, you run along and get your breakfast. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, don't you mention anything about this around town. No. Has the miners' payroll come in yet? Stage brought it in a few minutes ago. Uh -huh. uh, doesn't the sheriff's office usually deliver that? Yeah. Reed usually takes it out. Good. That's all we need now. What? If we can just pin something on him while the good people of Edgewater are reading my morning paper, I'm sure there'll be very little doubt about the election. Yeah, but I don't see you how you... just get that money pouch over here. I'll show you how. All right, but I still don't get it. You will. Uh, here he is now. Hello, man. Need a few more. Well, Dan's over at the post office now. He'll bring him in. Uh, men, Marshal Rocky Lane here has something to say to you. Well, it's just that I've got a good idea where these outlaws are hiding out that have been hitting Edgewater. I need some help to round them up. I'd like you men to be ready to ride in a posse the moment's notice. How about it? We'll be ready. Well, that's fine. Stay around town. We'll let you know when we need you. Good. Uh, not until after voting time. Thanks for coming in, all of you. Oh, Dan. Here's the miners' payroll. Oh, thanks, Bert. I'll take it right over. Did you get me some more men, Dan? A few more are on their way. Oh, uh, Bert Cranston just gave me the miners' payroll. I'd better ride out there and deliver it. Yeah, just make sure nothing happens to it, or I'll lose all their votes. <laughs> Don't worry. How much is that payroll? It must be over a thousand dollars. A lot of men working out there. I think I'll ride out with you, Dan. Sure, Marshal. Glad to have you. See that you get back in time to vote, Dan. <laughs> I will. 
So if Nugget takes it into his head to deliver it himself, it won't work. Nobody would ever you believe it. You told me he always sends Dan. He's... Well, Wait a minute. Looks like the marshal's riding with him. Then it won't work. We should have put him six feet under when he first hit town. That seems like a pretty good idea now. Get going. Wait. Just be sure to get the marshal, not Reed. I want him to deliver that pouch. We can't afford to have anyone see those wagons when they move out. I better take a couple of men and patrol the top of the hill. Yes, but be careful. Don't use your guns unless you have to. We don't want to attract any attention. Just leave it to me. Somebody took a shot at us. The marshal went after him. Those outlaws again. Yes. I better ride back there and see if he needs any help. Payroll's in. Well, this is fine. I'll be able to pay the other boys off at noon. Wagons, Dan. You should have minded your own business. Joe, take him back to the hideout and tie him up. I got to get into town and see my sister. And Joe, tell the other men to hurry up loading those last few wagons. All right, let's go. No, he was dead when I got to him. I sure hope that Dan got that money through all right. I think he did. We weren't too far from the mines when it happened. 
You ought to be back pretty soon. A lot of commotion out there. Well, action always gets them pepped up. They're all reading the morning paper. <laughs> that old fuddy-duddy has probably thought up some new lies about me. Pretty hard to believe. Found out. Found out what? Haven't you seen the paper? Ah, you know I never read that thing. I would. That ding dang female. She said she was coming over here to to interview you about it. Oh, she is, is she? Well, I'll give her a blast. Of... I wonder who told her. What difference does it make who told her? The whole town knows about it now. Now, don't you worry. I can explain all this to them. But they won't listen. I know they won't. They'll look at him like, like a criminal. No, they won't, Alice. <laughs> Not after I get through talking to him. Dan's a good boy. And I'll make him understand just that. Now, you wait and see. This isn't going to help your campaign any. Oh, the heck with my campaign. It's Dan that I'm worried about now. We've got to make him understand. We've got to. I want to talk to you, Sheriff. You're looking right at me. What's the matter? Then I'll talk to you later. Where is that deputy of yours? Well, he went out to your place to deliver the payroll. Didn't you see him? I saw him, all right. He gave me a money bag filled with rock. What? What? And now I find out he's an ex-convict. I know that, but... Oh, you knew it, did you? So you hired a criminal to keep law and order around here. No wonder these outlaws have been robbing us. Maybe you're both in league with them. Now, just a minute. Hold it, Sheriff. Mr. Scott, it isn't fair to judge Dan on this because of his past. I'll judge him any way I want. He stole my payroll money. Thanks to you, Nugget. Dan didn't do it, Dad. I know he didn't. You stay out of this. He had plenty of time after he left the marshal. Dan wouldn't do a thing like that, Henry. You've got to believe me. Nugget, you're out of your mind, and you're out of a job, too. Why, the whole town's up in arms about this. I don't care about my job. That's very apparent. When we get a new sheriff around here, maybe he'll have something to say to you about this. What do you mean? Now, Dan ought to be back right away. Why don't you give him a chance, Henry? I know he'll be able to explain all this. Chances are your fine deputy is miles away by now. But if he isn't, I'm warning you, he'll be shot on sight. Henry, no. you can't do that. You'll see if we can't. Come along, Alice. I don't believe it, Rocky. I know that boy too well. But I sure wish he'd get back here. Well, if these outlaws are behind this, there's a chance he won't get back. It must be them. It doesn't make sense. He wouldn't take an empty money pouch out to Scott. Why would he go to all that trouble? Because he didn't do it, that's why. Bert Cranston gave him that money pouch. Yeah. Bert ain't worth the powder to blow him out of town, but he ain't a crook. He had a chance to take that money. That's right. And that story his sister put in her paper about Dan. She must have gotten that from that fellow Brill. Yeah. I think they both could be mixed up in this. If I thought that old biddy did... Here she comes now. I'm going to give her an interview that'll curl her eyebrows. Oh, wait. I've got an idea. If she comes in here, this is what I want you to tell her. Come on in. I uh, presume you've seen the morning paper. Yeah, I, I, I see it. You feel mighty proud of yourself, don't you? Do you deny the story's true? It ain't none of your business whether I do or don't. Mm, of course, because you know the story is true. You think you got a story, huh? Well, I'm going to give you one that'll knock your front page for a double loop. You're going to give me a story? You gal dang tootin' I am. Just as soon as the marshal gets back. All right. What is it? The marshal shot one of them danged outlaws. He's over at the docks now, getting a deathbed confession from him. 
told the doc he'd give names and everything to the marshal. Because he wanted to clear his conscience before he died. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, ain't it? So when the marshal reports back to me, why, well, you can put that outlaw's confession in your paper and smoke it. Yes, yes, I will. Thanks, Nugget. You're very welcome. Okay. Bert Cranston.
Hanson's outside with one of the outlaws loading the wagons. I figured he was in with them. You sure you lost that marshal? Yeah, about a mile back. Come on, we better hurry up. We gotta get the rest of those sacks. Yeah, that's waiting for us down at the river. Where are the wagons? At the end of the passage. Most of them have gone ahead. I saw them from the top of the hill. Let's go. So you wanted to be sheriff, did you? Would have made a nice setup for him and the outlaws. And you figured Dan would get blamed for that stolen payroll. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, if you don't want to talk now, you will later in jail. Come on. I guess I might as well tell you, as long as you want to know. Sure, I'm in with the outlaws. And you almost got away with it. I still think I will. That's right, Marshal. Drop your guns. Both of you. <laughs> out to stop those wagons.
demand that you get me a lawyer. <laughs> your demanding days are over, Deborah Cranston. And any lawyer that would take your case is off his rocker. It's a good thing you told me to keep my eye on her, Rocky. Or she'd been clear out of the country by today. Good work, Nugget. I'm mighty glad folks around here are giving Dan the credit he deserves. Well, they should. If he hadn't brought that posse out there, they never would have seen them ore wagons again. That's right. Dad's changed his mind about Dan, too. Yes. He thinks I might not make such a bad son-in-law after all. Well, sir, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And the same to you, Sheriff. I hear the vote was unanimous. The landslide. Never worried me for a minute. <laughs> well, I better be on my way. Good luck. Good luck to all of you. Uh, thanks, Rocky. Sure, we're going to miss you, Rocky. So long. <laughs> <laughs> 